Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little transplant of this little uh, Monstera Addisonii. Uh, this is such a cute plant. I think I had one many, many years ago in my teens. And uh, I don't know, I can't remember. I did have a Swiss cheese plant and it did look similar to this, but I can't remember. But anyway, uh, it's an old plant. I believe it was, in the, it was called Philodendron back then and now it's Monstera. I can't be 100% sure. Um, but uh, this has just been sitting here on my grow bench for the last, oh, I'm going to say probably a month, and uh, it's been it's been growing away uh, just in, uh, I wouldn't say that it's full sun or uh, bright light, it's just indirect, um, whatever, uh, ambient light, I suppose, and uh, it's been growing away. The leaves are progressively getting a little bit smaller. This one's just developing, so that's not a, a, a good re representation. However, the fenestrations, the holes in the uh, in the leaves, there's far less there than there was when it was in the uh, the garden center. Uh, it had more, but uh, hopefully we can get more little holes going on in the leaves uh, if we take care of it and maybe give it a little bit more sun, uh, perhaps even more humidity. I'm not sure. Many people grow these as a hanging plant in a hanging basket. I am going to do mine up a pole as I've been doing for a lot of my uh, climbing uh, aeroids. So, yeah, join me while we do that. I'm going to bring the camera down, and we're going to unpop this one. We're going to see what the root system looks like. Uh, it's probably it's probably packed in there. And uh, we'll pot it up and uh, see what happens. Anyway, come on down. Okay, so I got this cute pot. Uh, this was actually what uh, I had, uh, I believe it was a ZZ plant growing in for the first many years of its life. And uh, it, it didn't have a drainage hole, so we, we drilled a drainage hole. This drainage hole is probably a little bit too small, but this is going to be a really, really light, airy mix, so it shouldn't matter. It will drain uh, freely enough. And um, we're going to use a soil that is, um, it's my pro mix. I'm going to try to use the BX, which is the multi-purpose uh, potting soil. It's got peat and it's got perlite, peat moss and perlite. Um, I believe it's also got some fertilizer in it. Um, and I'm also going to amend it with some orchid bark um, or sphagnum moss. I'm not sure what uh, I'm going to use. Let's see what's in the tickle trunk. Um, and we're going to mix all the, the soil up in here and then we're going to pot it up. These aeroids, whether it be philodendron, whether it be monstera, raphidophora, um, or any of the above, uh, they're climbers. Uh, many of them are uh, epiphytes. Some of them are just uh, ground dwellers, but they, they do like a nice airy mix. If they grow on the forest floor, it's going to be uh, along the, the surface of the soil and they're going to have their, uh, their little roots dig in, but they don't, they don't really want a compact soil. So this is the, uh, the BX uh, Pro Mix. This in itself would be fine. It's a nice light airy mix, but I just want to add some bigger particle sizes in there. Um, again, you can use uh, more perlite if you want. Uh, perlite tends to, to find its way to the surface, uh, so if you water often, it, it, you'll get like that white coating on the top of just perlite, and it's kind of irritating. So I'm going to add in some of this uh, fir bark. This is an orchid bark, and it's a medium, medium bark. This just adds to the particle size allows better airflow into the roots. I think I'm also going to add some sphagnum moss in here as well. And then I think I'm going to just moisten this soil before I use it. Here's some uh, some sphagnum moss. <laughs> I might as well use that too. Sphagnum moss does really really well at, uh, at holding on to moisture, but it also adds that little bit of fluffiness to the soil so that it doesn't compact as easily. You could break this up a little bit or you can leave them in long fibers. I would break it up for this particular um, application. Um, the long fiber is nice when you're dealing with orchids, but when you're dealing with uh, just using it as a soil amendment, uh, it's kind of nice to have it just slightly smaller fibers so you don't have uh, an area that's just sphagnum moss. But things like um, well, these aeroids, they, they like to, to root in sphagnum moss, so if, if you're having problems with, uh, with getting a cutting to root, maybe just try planting it directly in some moist sphagnum moss. It loves it. 
so it's 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 a uh, best friend I think all right so I'm mixing it up trying to get right to the bottom I want this moss to be uh, adequately mixed in same with the bark it doesn't really matter if there's pockets of any of these particular pieces because it, it just it, it's okay it's all good all right so this is nicely uh, mixed in I'm just gonna grab some water and we'll water in this soil so we'll add in a bit of water I don't want it to be soaking wet I just want it to be evenly moist dampened as it were might as well add in some slow release fertilizer can't go wrong with that you still want to fertilize as normal but uh, adding a little bit of slow release fertilizer just gives it that little little extra bit of a an insurance that uh, your plant is getting fed especially here in my house because uh, I forget to fertilize uh, quite often if it's not in the grow room in the grow room it's easier because I have it set up kind of in an injection system so as I water the plants things get fertilized uh, weekly but um, when they go upstairs and I'm just doing little watering cans uh, I forget to add the fertilizer many times okay so I got a nice a beautiful mix of, uh, of sphagnum moss and peat and perlite it's just beautiful so we'll move this off to the side the drain hole here is is uh, is off to the side a little bit I'm gonna add a piece of paper towel I'm just gonna rip it in half because I don't need to use the whole thing just to cover it over so the dirt doesn't come out the bottom the hole is over here on this side so I want to make sure that my moss pole doesn't cover it and uh, doesn't allow drainage to come through or doesn't allow water to, to drain out now I'm just going to add a little bit to the bottom of soil this soil feels so nice it's so soft and it's warm too I always use uh, warm water when I'm watering my plants lukewarm never hot never cold but uh, it's so nice the plants really appreciate not getting shocked with uh, with uh, with cold water so look at those beautiful roots uh, it's really looking nice I was going to try to split this up but I'm not going to I don't want to disturb the roots too too badly uh, what I am going to do because these have been twirling around the the pot I'm going to tease them apart a little bit this was a, a nice soil mix that they had uh, had used it's got nice big particle sizes kind of like what I'm doing right now I just want to make sure that the the roots don't continue to, to circle I want them to get out there and enjoy the rest of the pot okay so with this I'm just going to plunk it down here along the side I might actually have it go down a little bit deeper than it was planted in the pot so that hopefully some of these little internodes uh, will get uh, covered with some some uh, some soil if I if I bury the plant a little bit deeper uh, some of these uh, uh, leaves I might remove so that they don't rot the ones that are at soil level just remove those and then the, the little nodes where the leaf came from those are going to be able to develop uh, roots new roots they probably already got little aerial roots started at that point uh, let me spin this a little bit I want this long one to be right up against the pole so that it naturally wants to try to climb the pole let me adjust the camera a little bit again let's uh, add some more soil move those leaves out of the way it would have been nice if I could uh, move those uh, leaves or sorry move uh, remove these plants and and put them around the 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 pole a little bit better but uh, I didn't want to damage the roots too much so I'm just going in I'm adding soil to the uh, to the pot you've heard me say it before I want to get rid of all the air pockets again an oxymoron I want to have a lot of airflow to the roots but you don't want big air pockets if you've watched any of my videos in the past you know that there we go 
air to the roots usually kills if you have big air pockets it usually kills a root but uh, good airflow actually creates a healthy root so uh, it's very confusing all right there we go beautiful it looks so nice perfect that's a really nice looking soil and now I've got, uh, I don't know that this will fit around here. I've got some of these little plant ties. I'm just going to use this Velcro plant tie in here. And I'm just going to go around the pole lightly just so that it makes contact with the moss pole or the, the rope pole. And uh, then hopefully it will start to, to eventually adhere itself. So here it is, looking beautiful. Uh, hopefully it uh, starts to climb really, really quickly. It's been sitting here in, in uh, the, the medium uh, ambient light uh, for a little while and it's been growing. Uh, so if I give it a little bit more light, it's going to do really, really well. So um, yeah, show me what you're growing. Uh, I guess you want to know some care tips about these. These would like a bright, indirect location. Uh, so, so as much light, filtered light as you can give it in the house, outside, if you're growing it outside, make sure not to give it full sun, uh, give it a part shade location, uh, and, uh, and kind of work its way into that. You don't want to burn the leaves. Uh, you want to water it when the soil becomes almost dry. Um, it likes to be evenly moist and then, and then allow the top inch or two to dry out between waterings. Um, Fertilize when it's actively growing, so usually in the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, in the in the, the winter when it's not really growing, there's no need to fertilize. And when I fertilize, I'll just use something that's maybe a, a higher in nitrogen, so a higher in the, the, the first number in your fertilizer. Perhaps a, a balanced fertilizer is just fine too. With these guys, because you want the green growth, it, it's fine to just use a, a nitrogen rich fertilizer because that will give you ample uh, green growth but it's probably good to do a, a balanced fertilizer so you get good uh, root production as well good healthy roots so without good healthy roots you're not going to have a healthy plant so keep that in mind um, so yeah show me what you're growing I'd love to see if you have any uh, climbing plants like these maybe some philodendrons some uh, raphidophora or some uh, some monstera uh, I'd love to see if you're growing them on poles or, or how you're how you're doing it. Some people grow them on uh, on planks of wood, and some people uh, just let them hang. So either way, they they're so they're so beautiful. The the benefit to having it grow up a pole and allowing the roots to to possibly have something to attach to is usually the leaves get a little bit bigger when that happens. So the same thing with your golden pothos. If you give it a something to to climb on, it will be much happier. The leaves will progressively get bigger. They can get actually quite big, uh, but because we tend to have them just in a hanging pot uh, in our house, they, they drape and the leaves just stay on the smaller side. So it's a really fun project to do if you want to try to increase the, uh, the leaf size. Also, humidity for these guys, they would like a higher humidity. In my house, it's between 35 and 45% uh, percent humidity. In the summertime, it gets a little bit warmer. In the wintertime, it gets a little lower. Uh, but on average, it's about 35 to 45 percent. Um, in that, they're going to be okay. Uh, if you increase the uh, the humidity, you'll notice the uh, the aerial roots are going to get a lot more substantial. You're going to get uh, better growth on those, uh, and in that, your plant is going to be happier. Uh, so, so yeah, the higher hum the higher the humidity you can offer, the the happier it's going to be. But you can get away with being slightly on the drier side. Uh, you might not get as big of leaves, but uh, you're still going to get a, a happy, healthy plant. Uh, also, if you notice a lot of uh, brown tips on your leaves, it could be your water quality. Try using a distilled water. Um, also, if you're fertilizing, uh, try to use like a half strength or a quarter strength fertilizer a little bit more often so you're not burning the leaves. Uh, as for pests, um, I haven't had too many pests on this one, but I hear that thrip is a problem, um, which you just basically go in and, and try to remove them. Uh, giving your plant a shower really helps out a lot. Um, and I don't know, I use, I've been using some insecticidal soap for those. I've also been using the, uh, the, the beneficial mites in the grow space and that's been helping out as well. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, if you have any other questions, uh, please leave comments below. I'll try my best to get to them. 
And, uh, yeah, until next time, you guys, happy growing!